Hi, my name is Philip Morgan. Um, what I'm doing with this show slash podcast is I'd like to teach you the things that I come across, the things that I'm actively learning. I firmly believe that teaching is the best way to learn for um, a thousand reasons. I'll, I'll talk about them in a little bit. Um, and for that reason, you know, in order for me to learn appropriately, in order for me to learn at my best it means teaching it to somebody else. And it's um, interesting too, by teaching somebody over the internet, somebody whose face I don't see, it means that I have to teach so broadly that I have, um, that I can cover all my bases. And that further still helps me solidify ideas in my own brain. Um, I toyed around with some ideas, you know, that, that this consider this like an intro to the show that I'm doing. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about some of the thoughts that have been running through my head as I go. So... You know, teaching visually is very helpful. I, I used to teach martial arts, and, you know, that's something that I can't say um, I could do effectively without demonstration with the body, for example. So visual representation, visual examples, in the case of martial arts, even physical examples, um, they seem on the surface like they're absolutely necessary, at least in some domains, you know, across some fields, right? I mean, martial arts makes sense because you're moving the body, so you'd want to... Um, you'd want to demonstrate with the body. It's perfectly sensible, but uh, I have a bit of a qualm with that. I, I like the ability to teach without with as, as little as possible. Um, and as far as I can tell, the best way we have to do that is with audio. I mean, like words are transmitted through audio um, and you know language is how we convey ideas. It's not the only way we convey ideas, by the way. I mean, apparently, uh, if you believe these numbers, like... Uh, I don't know a number. The vast majority of uh, communication actually happens non-verbally. So facial expressions, tone of voice, body language, a whole slew of things. Um, because, you know, we're really good at picking up all these little signals. So the idea is like to simplify it down to audio. You you get rid of so much extra information. Your audio has got to be like, like top notch to make that shit work. Um, and that's the goal. That's my dream. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how close I get to that today. But I like... Um, my my skill set that I want to create for myself is the ability to teach anything with just words. So um, knowing that I'm going to be uploading this to podcasts uh, or, you know, to, to audio only formats really helps me. Uh, well, A, it means I don't have to do so much work coming up with like video editing softwares and things like that. I get to stick to the things that I enjoy doing, which um, is, frankly is, is just speaking. So, I mean, I like these other things too, but uh, that's, that's for another day. So, you know, why, uh, let's, let's bring it down to a question. Why is it that teaching um, is the best way of learning? Yeah, this, this um, first of all, I, I love the fact that, that it's true. Um, I, I, I'm going to try and break this down. I'm going to segue a lot. I apologize if you're looking for like a clean, straightforward answer to any question I ask. I am not a straightforward kind of guy. I'm very curvy in a lot of ways. Um, so, um, I don't know. I'm going to be going on way too many tangents to make most people comfortable, I'm sure. But, oh man, I distracted myself with that tangent about the tangent I was about to go on. So now I don't have that tangent in place. What was I just talking about? I was talking about um, teaching being the best format. That's right. Um, damn. Damn. Well, here we go. I'm just going to have to pick a topic and gun with it. Teaching is the best way to learn. Why is that? Well, as far as I can tell, um, learning comes from having a problem and solving the problem. That's, that's, the, that's the simplest a possible way I know how to describe it. Um, it's from everything I've learned in my educational technology class. It's something I'm studying at Georgia Tech right now. Um, the... The ideas we have about how people learn are so vast and skewed and, and warped in so many ways. You know, like there's there's very few simple approaches to teaching somebody anything because you, you have to contend with this problem of everybody that you teach has their own set of ideas, their own um, pre-existing concepts that already exist in their head. And that's all you have to work with is the only uh, tools you are given as a teacher, aside from the ones that you're already using, are what's already in the other person's head. And why is, it, why is that true? Well, um, it, it, I believe that's true based on the way that I understand words work, right? So you have a word for something. At, at its core, a word is, is nothing. It's just, it's just a sound my mouth flaps are making, right? It's a, it's a set of, of vibrations in the air, all right? It's a symbol, so to speak, right? 
Um, but that symbol doesn't mean anything until it starts to mean something. So it doesn't mean anything until it starts representing something that you're familiar with. Take, for example, somebody coming up to you in another language, right? Um, and they're calm. They're not shouting at you or speaking. They're just saying, you know, like, 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 that. Like those words mean, <laughs> those sounds mean nothing. But if I told you that meant um, uh, peace be with you, then from that point onward, anytime somebody else came up and said, you know exactly what they're talking about. They were wishing you well. Um, it's that kind of representation that, um, uh, so yeah, that's that's how words work. Is is It seems to be that you kind of call forth this uh whatever whatever structures in their head whatever networks sub networks in their brain are already um already built around that word why do i say sub networks um the brain uh, as far as i understand it and i'm sure you you know you, you're coming with me on this learning experience i want you to know oh this is my tangent from earlier by the way um, I want you to know that, you know, like all these things that I'm speaking about, I'm learning as I go. Like this is how I learn as well. So um, I, I don't think I made that clear before. Like this, this is me kind of collecting and solidifying, solidifying the ideas that I've already come with. So, um, you know, if you're listening to this, you're learning with me. So thanks for joining me and I hope you have a great time. Anyways, back on it. So the brain, right? The brain, as far as I understand it, and uh, I know... It, most of what I learned about the brain from artificial intelligence, my, my studies in that, um, as well as a little bit of uh, just perusing of the Wikipedia about the biological structures, because, um, I don't know, I like learning. It's important to me knowing that the technology we use in AI has some fundamental support in biology. Um, and the reason why I say that is biology has been doing this AI game, has been built, doing this intelligence game for literally, you know, millions, perhaps billions of years, right? Like our bodies are billions of year old structures. It's taken billions of years of information processing to give us the opportunity to even speak. Um, nonetheless, you know, like make podcasts, right? So, um, ah, oh, damn, that's the problem with the tangents. Sometimes I lose where I came from. You know, you gotta trace these threads back every once in a while. Yeah, so I was talking about the brain networks and um learning yeah so I, I i derive most of my understanding about the brain from this ai um and the fascination i have with the brain is its network structure i mean you cut a head open uh don't do it by the way that's mostly illegal unless you get a free head in which case have at it you, you cut a brain open and it looks like a big old you know a gelatinous mass of gray matter uh but on the inside it's really a Thick, like dense, and I'm talking thick with two C's collection of neurons, um, billions and billions of neurons. And I love it. Like, I'll say the word billions. This is a great example of a word we use. I don't think we understand. I'll say the word billions. All right. And I can't even comprehend what that means. All right. I know mathematically it's a one with nine zeros behind it. But in my head, can you imagine even a thousand things at the same time? Now do that a million more times. Like that's a billion. It's just, it's an insane, insane number. And we have 86 of these billions of neurons in our brain. Just so, so many. An incredible, incredible amount. Um, and if you're taking a pretty naive view, as in, naive as in like, I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know, it, it, it seems to be that the way knowledge is structured in the brain is through these little kind of sub-networks, right? So you can imagine, um, again, th this is one of these cases where if I had a whiteboard, which I do, I'd use it, but I want to do it for um, audio too. So if you imagine uh, a pentagon, like, uh, yeah, a pentagon, right? So, um, or if it's easier, a five, uh, a five-pointed star with just the dots at the end and then take the stars away. You imagine like a pentagon of, of dots. Um, the question is, how many ways can you connect these dots, right? You can connect the very top one to the bottom left. You can connect uh, the far left one to the far right. And you've got these two lines that are intersecting with one another. That's one way. Um, and I'm sure you can imagine, you know, draw it out on a piece of paper if you like, um, uh, a couple ways. There's a specific number of ways. If I remember from my combinatorics class, um, it's something like, it's either five exponential, or sorry, five, not exponential, uh, with the exclamation point. Damn, five, bang. Um, so five times four times three times two times one. That's what the exclamation point stands for. Totally blanking on the name. That's how this life goes. Um, there's a lot of ways. That's the point. And that's just with five 
nodes, right? So if you imagine in the brain that any configuration of these five dots, uh, of these lines connecting these five dots is an idea, right? That's how an idea is represented. It's just some configuration of signals firing in sequence, right? Then you can imagine that there's five exponential damn factorial that's the word and there's five factorial uh possibilities that there's five factorial different ideas that can be represented with just these five dots now the interesting thing about factorial and again if you know combinatorics uh and it's not factorial <laughs> my apologies right um all i know is this regardless of a number you choose once you add a sixth dot it increases the number of possible connections um exponentially compared to the fifth you add 10 dots or 11 or 20 or 100, all right, the number of possible combinations of lines you can draw between this, uh, uh, between uh, points on this graph are astronomical compared to just five, all right? And in our brain, we don't have 100 or 1,000 or a million or 86 million. We have 1,086 million, right? I didn't say that number right. The idea was a thousand times 86 million different neurons. That's 86 billion neurons in our brain on average, roughly speaking. That's a ridiculous amount of ex possible expression. It's an absolutely insane number. And I remember doing this math uh, in the car one time and it, it turned out to be the number of possible connections between uh, all of the neurons in your brain, assuming that they're all independent, is something the tune of like 676 like billion quadrillion just a you know <laughs> what the fuck is that number even it's not it's 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 a universe of possibility and a universe is not a, an exaggeration of a word i mean i don't know maybe it is but just an absolute it, it might as well be infinite it might as well extend toward past the end of time if you had like one change in your brain every second for the rest of eternity like it's an insane number it's absolutely insane so that's the amount of uh um that's 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 how i understand brains as representing ideas is is um essentially as you're uh, drinking in sensory data about the world around you you're firing first off your sensory organs that might be like the retina in your eyes that might be the the uh drums in your ears you know um the the electrical signals in your fingertips and in your nose all those things right and then uh what those sensory organs do is they start sending electrical signals down the neurons that are connected to them i don't think many people know this but your brain isn't the only place the neurons occur, right? Nerves in your body are the same neurons. They're the same kind of neural body. Um, they're neurons just like the ones in your brain. It's just that they're, they're kind of in ropes um, and there's still a ton of them. That's why you can feel things on every inch of your skin. It's not just um, what's in your head. So all throughout your body, you're picking up on the sensory information. And what your brain is doing is it's reorganizing neurons. It's reorganizing which patterns of neurons fire so that it can better represent and uh, the word is encode this information. So, um, and the way it does this, um, well, let's pause there. I'm, I'll, I'll get to that in a second if I start talking about AI. Um, uh, so, it, essentially, your brain is drawing these graph structures from the world around you constantly. And that's all it's doing all the time, right? And that's what learning is, right? That's what, um, yeah, that's what learning is. It's, it's taking... Whatever representations already exist in your head, whatever graphs, whatever you can imagine, just dots that are already being connected by some lines, and it's connecting them to new ideas. So you can imagine in your head, um, earlier I, I mentioned the five dotted pentagram, right? Imagine that on like the left side of your imagination and put another five dots on the right side of your imagination. Each one of them has their own configuration. Draw a line down uh, one side, uh, draw a line between two dots on the left and then draw a line between any two dots on the right, right? Imagine that's just an idea, all right? And that's the graphical representation of an idea, right? What the brain does is it says, all right, so this graph on the left, uh, we'll call this fire, right? This connects to all these scary things. This connects to heat, damage, California, wildfires, political, climate change, right? Like a whole ton of shit over there on the left. That's fire. And over here on the right, um, I like smoking weed. This one over here is talking about like weed. You know, you got drugs, calm, relaxed, right? Illegal. You got, uh, uh, I'm worried about this showing up on my podcast and biting me ass in the ass in the future, right? These are the ideas on the right connected to the weed. Whether you attach them together, smack, you have, I don't know, 
a lighter, right? Like that's how two ideas connect. It's like the act of lighting marijuana on fire. Uh, what a good example. What a, what a good freaking first start example. Already brushing it off on weed. It'll, it'll get legal one day. <laughs> Anyways, back to the game. So um, this is as far, this is the simplest way I understand of, um, of, uh, of knowledge being represented in the brain. So uh, back to the question was why is it that teaching somebody else is the best way as far as I know to, um, I keep saying as far as I know, take it for granted that anything that I say is as far as I know, right? The best way to uh, learn information on your own is to try and teach it to somebody else. Well, it's this idea that, so this connection that happens between those two pentagrams, right? Those two pentagons, right? It's not an instantaneous activity. It's something that happens over time. These structures have to be built. They don't snap into existence as you might imagine them to, right? They, they, they're grown. Um, and the way they do that is fascinating. I was looking into this. Um, so I, I'll take a detour down the, uh, the, the neural structures in the brain. So your brain, I said earlier, is 86 billion neurons, right? There's also about 100 times as many of these other types of cell called uh, glial cells or glial cells. I don't know, gif, gif, whatever you like. Um, I'm going to call them glial cells. Uh, and what these glials, no, I switched it up. What these glials do is they, um, they're kind of the support network, right? So they'll, they'll do things like um, uh, attract neurons. They'll, they'll kind of grab them and pull them and, and stretch them out toward, towards the edge of the brain, right? So that neurons can kind of connect deeper and deeper. They'll, they'll grab them by the synapses and kind of like walk with them. They'll do all sorts of things. They'll do this other thing. So uh, along the, the neuron, um, if you imagine... I don't know if you've seen a neuron before, so I'll try and describe it, right? Um, I'm showing this on video. So imagine two hands, all right? So like uh, uh, one hand, uh, it's, got, it's got its fingers, right? And in the middle of the palm of the hand, you can imagine that's the nucleus of the cell, just like any other nucleus, all right? So inside the nucleus, that's where all the DNA is. That's where all that body knowledge is. And the fingers on that hand, right, um, there can be not just five, but like hundreds or even uh, in some cases like thousands, 5,000. I don't know if that number is right, but it's in my head. Um, hundreds or even thousands of these little fingers. And these are called the dendrites. Oh, I hope that I got that one right. And what these dendrites do is they collect signals from, uh, any other neuron that's connected to it. Okay. So you imagine, uh, down, uh, on, on that same hand, you're traveling down the wrist. All right. And then down the forearm and further towards the elbow. And imagine at that elbow, all right, cut the rest of the body off. There's another hand. Okay, <laughs> so it's just two hands connected with an arm. All right, that's just kind of the, the idea. Um, and at the end of that elbow piece that has a hand on it is some more fingers. Uh, and these are the synapses. These are the things that connect to other cells, that, that connect to other neurons. So they just kind of spit things out. But down the line that is the arm, all right, this is called the axon, right? This is where, this is, you can consider this the wire, that neural signals travel down, right? This is like the copper wiring of the brain. It's not copper, but, um, and down this axon, what happens is it'll get, it'll get signals from the first hand, from the dendrites, right? It'll get signals and then it'll tr uh, the nucleus will like get all fired up, get all antsy and it'll try and fire these signals down the axon, right? Down that arm. Um, and what happens is these signals get lost over time, right? As, as it travels further and further down, um, you know, these axons can be, you know, centimeters long, which is pretty long for like signals to travel. Um, it, it can, this, uh, the electrical signals can kind of get lost, um, and they'll, they'll get absorbed by the rest of the brain. All right. But if it does reach the end, uh, and hit the other synapses, it'll start to spread to other neurons and, you know, further, and that'll just propagate outwards further still. That's more, um, you know, that, that's. Uh, any one on that graph that I was talking about originally, that five uh, dotted graph, any one of those dots, that's uh, considered that a neuron. And any, any axon, any connection you would draw between those dots, that would be like an axon, right? All right, so back to it. So uh, what happens with these glial cells is that they insulate, some of them, there's some class, some cast of these cells, right? They will insulate these axons. Remember, that's the arm that the signals were traveling down. It insulates them so that electrical signals don't get lost. And they're more and more likely to travel down the cell. Um, and it's brilliant. That's why you need so many of them because you need, um, you know, some, some glial cells will, will contribute, will, will just like line, um, will insulate these things left and right. All right, so the way that they insulate these axons is um, by building this little fatty sheath. Um, you know, if you've ever seen a wire, 
it's literally like uh, the the rubber insulation around it, but made out of fat instead, so it doesn't you know, uh, so it's so it's body like, so it can be reproduced. Um, so it, it spits these out, and there's something else interesting that an axon can do. All right, so let's let's get away from the hands and arm visualization. Um, let's zoom in on this axon in your imagination and. Uh, focus on um, and imagine it's like a finger all right and a finger in the sense that it has segments so you can imagine your own finger you can even look at your own you see it's got like these uh, it's got knuckles on it all right so imagine that uh, what the way it's building this fat around these uh, around these axons is wherever your knuckles aren't it builds like a little mini tube maybe like an inch long um, and uh, relative to your fingers, but relative to the axon, like it's by the nanometer scales, it's super tiny. All right, uh, but it builds these little fatty sheets, and where your knuckles are are like gaps between the fat. So underneath the wire, the axon is still there. All right, but around where those knuckles are is like a little gap. Those gaps are there for a very important reason. It's because that myelin sheath that I was talking about earlier, um, that insulation, it doesn't just uh, uh, keep things from getting lost, all right, that's part of what it does, but it turns out, I, I learned this from a, a buddy of mine, like, it turns out it does actually kind of uh, still get absorbed through the myelin sheath. So it's between those little um, gaps in the knuckles, all right, or, or where they are, the knuckles in our visualizations, right? Anyway, between those little gaps in the knuckles, that's where these signals get recharged. And I, I, I'm not sure that they do that through the glial cells or not. I, I can't imagine where else they would get signals from. Um, so, um, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but you can imagine that these glial cells are building like a little repeater n structure, a little repeater network. So it gets a signal, all right, and then it's, it just copies and pastes the signal back out and it does this in a chain. So one copies and pastes to the next, that one copies and pastes to the next, and it just throws this down the line. And once you get, you know, uh, one neuron that connect, that can connect to, you can imagine two or three at a time, any two or three of those can connect to like four, can individually connect to two or three more, right? So you imagine in just two layers like that, all right? If, uh, here, let's simplify this down. In just two layers, imagine one neuron can, can connect to two other neurons. So in just two layers, one can connect to two, <laughs> I keep repeating that, and each of those can connect to two more. So by the end of it, one neuron can connect to four neurons that are two layers away, all right? Now, if it was three, one neuron can connect to how many? You, you've got a, the first one connects to three, and each of those three connect to three more, so in that second layer, you've got nine total neurons, right? If it was four, it would be 16. You see the pattern here? It's, uh, they're, they're, you square the numbers, all right? But that's just with two. But it turns out neurons can, 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 uh, can connect, I'm stumbling now, neurons can connect to sometimes hundreds or even thousands of other neurons. So the amount of scaling power that your brain has is intense, magnanimous. It's just, it's, it's astounding how far this thing can go, how, how many structures this thing can represent. That's why we're able to do such crazy complex things, like, like talk to a camera for, you know, like no survival reasons whatsoever. It's, it's just fascinating to me. It's, it's really something else. Um, so that's the structure of how signals kind of propagate through the brain. And I brought up the myelin sheaths because, uh, for a very specific reason, because I was mentioning it takes time. It takes time. Um, and the way your brain learns to structure these myelin sheaths around these axons, right? The way it learns to, 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 to carry these wires is, is through experience, literally experience, right? Um, uh, every time it gets a, a signal gets fired down a neuron, right? It, you can consider it as having a little bit more experience. This is, again, a rudimentary way of saying this, but, um, and the more and more a neuron fires, the more and more it builds up the sheath because your brain wants to, um, the, your brain figures, right? The structure, the network structure figures that if information is seen and used frequently, it's probably important. And all the other stuff, all the stuff that's not seen, right, uh, that let's say you, you show up to a party, you're talking to somebody, you, you learn their name, and you realize like you're not going to talk to them ever again, and their name just blinks out of existence in your head, right? Um, not in real life, they're still human beings, but in your brain, it's just gone. This is an example of your brain not seeking importance, not finding importance in this structure, right? And the way it determines that it's not important is it's not being used, right? 
if you had repeated that person's name, looked them in the eyes and said, oh, hey, uh, Johnny, it's nice to meet you, Johnny, good to see you, Johnny, you're never forget going to forget the word Johnny ever again, especially when it applies to their face, right? And why? It's because your brain is firing these Johnny signals through the structure over and over and over again. It's building up these, these insulated pathways so that it's getting better and better at representing this information. Um, the idea is it's probably going to need it in the future. So it's a win, 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 win situation for the brain to, to, to engage in this way by ignoring useless information, sticking with the important information. All right. Um, this is important when it comes to teaching other people because teaching other people takes those substructures that are already in the back of your head, right? Say you showed up to a class or you read an article or watched a YouTube video. You've got two, three idea networks, all right? Sub graphs, sub networks bouncing around in your brain and they're just kind of chilling back there. But the connections between them are not solidified yet. So you might bring up one idea. Oh, damn. Let's see if I can come up with an example of uh of of things that may be connected that apps or uh, that you would think are connected that are not oh, i'm sorry guys it's just uh that's not clicking so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to work with me in the abstract here for a moment all right so you've got these ideas that are in your head two things you learn oh in math for example right let's let's uh let's dive into algebra all right oh yeah how about this okay algebra all right multiplication Okay, you know, you may have spent third grade like me memorizing um, your your times tables. So three times three, that's nine. All right, three times 12 is 36. All right, things like that. Yeah, I know I'm fast. I got A1 class. <laughs> oh, damn, sorry about that. Try to make a joke, but my freaking tongue started tripping over myself. My tongue gets exhausted when I speak into the camera for this long. That's what I'm <laughs> noticing. Anyways, yeah, so multiplication, right? You've got multiplication in your brain. Uh, maybe you've memorized a couple of these patterns, and it's great. And you know addition, two, all right? Three plus three, that's six, not nine. I almost said nine. All right, four plus four, that's not 16. That's eight, right? You've got, you've, you know, different patterns, okay? But what you don't know if you're in third grade like me is multiplication is literally just addition repeated. So three times three, that's the same as saying three plus three, but three times. So three plus three plus three, that's nine. Three times three is nine. Four plus four, that's saying... Add four together four times, or sorry, four times four. And it's saying add four together four times. Four plus four plus four plus four. That's 16. So until um, you do something, it doesn't need to be teaching, but until you do something, you don't have the connections between these two otherwise disparate ideas, right? And teaching is just a brilliant way to, to do this because in order to teach effectively, right, in order to teach properly, you have to take the stance of somebody who doesn't quite know what you're talking about, who, who might not have a clear grasp of, of the concepts that you're, you're starting with uh, moving into the topic, right? Um, you, need to, you need to take that stance. And what that means is being humble with yourself and saying, all right, well, maybe I don't know, right? It, you, you, you've got you've to work that into your head. Like maybe I don't quite know these ideas uh, so well either. So it's good for me to elaborate them too. Um, and it's like you're taking a step back into your own mind and you're saying, all right, well, let's grab these ideas and let's fuse them together so I can work with them. You know, you're not just walking on with your life pretending you know things. When you take the opportunity, when you take the time to do anything, whether it be write it down on a piece of paper to, uh, or, or teach it to somebody else, anything like that, um, when you take the time to do that, you're actively taking the time to wire your brain together, to spin these webs of connections, to spin these neurons into new ideas, or at least better yet, stronger ideas, right? You're, you're taking the Lego blocks that are your pre-existing concepts. And when you're writing or teaching, you're stacking those Legos together into a new super block, right? A new super component that you can use and work with and, and do it however you want to in the future. Uh, so all that to say, thank you for listening. Be, give, you being here gives me an opportunity to teach somebody. And, and at the moment, I, this is my first episode. Um, any viewers who are watching, I mean, I threw some videos up on YouTube, so I'm going to throw this on YouTube too. These are among my first episodes. Anybody who's watching this, um, like I deeply value your attention because I, I'm thankful for any chance I get to learn more. 
there, there's no end to the saying, like, knowledge is power. It's an old cliche, but god damn. <laughs> That's the best one. <laughs> That's the best cliche. That, that thing lasted eternity. Knowledge is power, dude. I mean, look around you today. Uh, look at, at the people who are powerful today. You know, uh, the, the tech wizards, you know, the, the startup entrepreneurs, the, um, the readers and the philosophers. I mean, like, the, at the very least, if they're not powerful, they're the people that I respect. And um, I don't know, to become something akin to that is, is absolutely a dream of mine. So I, I, love, I love teaching because it means I get to learn, you know, through and through. Um, but on top of that, it means I get to share anything that I learned today. If you learn something from it. I just copied value into the world. I just, you know, it's like just blink and somebody else knows something too. Uh, that's uh, copy pasting ideas into somebody else's head. I mean, that's, that is the true beauty of this, you know, modern technological regime. I mean, social media, it's, anybody can, can point at his flaws these days. I know it's popular to be like, oh, it's draining your brain and, and things like that. And believe me, oh, it can distract the hell out of you. Don't get me wrong, that shit can take you away from life if you're not careful, but also it gives the opportunity for people who care to share, to share exponentially. So much sharing. Imagine your brain, all right, like neurons. One neuron shares a signal to the others. That's precisely how social media works, YouTube, Twitter, all right, one neuron, one person can connect to hundreds, thousands, oftentimes millions of other human beings and share their ideas to them and just send them forward in the network. And each one of those millions of people have the opportunity to take that idea, learn from it, and share it further. And if it's a good idea, you can do untold amounts of powerful, great deeds in this world by sharing something useful. It's magical. It's magnificent. It's one of the more powerful, I mean, th shit, this is, this is a, a deitous force. It's intense, but it brings with it a scary proposition, which is that a bad idea can propagate just as strongly if you're not careful. Uh, so the only way I figured <laughs> to, to combat that is to, is to have better ideas, is to send those bitches out as fast as you fucking can. Uh, get as many people on the good idea train as humanly possible because, um, I mean, that's the only way good ideas can win. But if it does, who oh, imagine? Just imagine the world. All right. I don't know how long this has been going on for. I, I My camera stand is blocking my, my status, but I'm going to sign this off for now. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I'll drop a clickbait title for this on YouTube and throw this on my podcast thing. It'll be great. Um, I'll be back. I, 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 I film uh, videos and podcasts sporadically as often as I can. It's usually so far every single day, um, sometimes one or two videos a day. Uh, on my YouTube channel, I'm, I'm goofing off. You can find me. I'm Philip Morgan. Um, on my podcast, uh, I, I hope to have more like this. I had a great time talking. It feels like I'm talking to you, and I think it's because I'm, I'm taking this uh, seriously. It's different because I literally am alone in my house in the basement. Uh, before, it felt like I was, I was trying to talk to myself. But um, again, any, any opportunity to share what I know, it just makes me so, so gleefully happy. So I'm going to go to sleep uh, happy tonight. Damn. All right, I keep on rambling. It's time to turn this off. Have a great one. Peace out, y'all. Peace.